and see how these teams did overall as a whole this season, but also how well I was able to predict their final 10 games. So, without further ado, let us jump right in to the Eastern Conference. So, uh, the East and the West both have 15 teams each for the Eastern Conference. This is the order that I thought the teams would finish after it was all said and done. My predicted Eastern Conference seating was number one in the East, the Boston Celtics, number two, the Milwaukee Bucks, number three, the New York Knicks, number four, the Cleveland Cavaliers, number five, the Orlando Magic, number six, the Miami Heat, number seven, finishing with the record. 
anyways um, yeah definitely when I was filming that video I thought I'd get some heat for that because as much as the Warriors are a great team I'm a fan of course I'm gonna give them more wins than I actually think the consensus population will believe um, but they actually delivered so that was really awesome and on top of that they didn't lose those two games by very much so despite their best efforts they played amazing they still finish at the 10th seed so I, I am pretty happy with my prediction that then after that you've got the Houston Rockets um, okay so for the final five teams that are not in the playoffs or the play-in in the West their final order was Rockets, Jazz, Grizzlies, Spurs, Trailblazers I was close Rockets, Jazz, and Grizzlies all correct, and I had the Trailblazers and the Spurs at the exact same record, but the Trailblazers did hold the tie record, so I had them ahead of the Spurs. Uh, in reality, it was flipped. So, the Rockets finished at a record of 41-41. and 41. They went 4-6 and six in their last time. I thought that they would go 5-5 five and five and finish at 42-40. and 40. Uh, It's a, a game off for them. Then the Jazz, I had them going 2-7 in their final 9 and finishing at 31-51. They did exactly that. They went 2-7 and, and they finished at 31-51 and, and they finished in the 12th seed like I predicted. Then the Grizzlies, I had the Grizzlies going 2-7 in their final 9 games and finishing at a record of 26-56. and 56. They did one better than that. They would finish 27-55. Seven, sorry, three and six in their last nine games. And then the Spurs, the Spurs finished at the 14th seed, uh, getting 22 wins and 60 losses. They ended on a six and four run in their last 10 games. They were looking pretty good. They took down the Denver Nuggets. It was a great game. Uh, I had the Spurs going three and six and finishing at 20 and 62. So they did better than I thought. And then finally, the Trailblazers finished in 15th with a record of 21 and 61, going 20 in their last 10 games. I thought that they would go 1 and 8 in their last 9 and finish at 20 and 62. So they ended up getting one more win than I predicted. So that is it. That is the end of the recap uh, for the West. What we wrong about the one seed, the two seed, and the three, and the three seed. Um, I got the four seed correct, that it would be the Clippers, but I got the record wrong. I got the five seed wrong. I got the six seed wrong. I got the seven seed wrong. I got the eight seed wrong. I got the nine seed wrong. I did, however, get the Lakers record correct, so that's something. Then I got the tenth seed correct, and I got the record correct for the Warriors. And 11, 12, and 13, I got the seeding correct, and I got the Jazz's record correct, and then 14th and 15th, I got wrong. So, yeah, the West was very close. Um, despite my best efforts, I could not predict how it would turn out, but uh, I'm interested to see how things play out. So, now that all of this has been determined, we have our seedings. Uh, we get to move into the play-in tournament. So, if you don't know, a couple years ago they changed up how the basketball playoffs work. It used to be the top eight seeds in each conference would just advance into the postseason, but they wanted to make a mini bracket tournament before the postseason just to spice things up. So now, seeds seven through ten must play in a mini tournament uh, to determine who gets to go into playoffs. So, coming up this Tuesday, we have our first wave of play-in tournament games. So, let's take a look. On Tuesday at 4.30 p.m., we have the West 7 and 8 matchup. It is a matchup between the Lakers and the Pelicans. So, the way this works is whoever wins this game goes on to play the Denver Nuggets in the 
playoffs and the loser of this game must play another play-in game that is there they don't get eliminated but they have to play one more game in order to determine if they make the playoffs after that game at 7 p.m on tuesday you have a matchup between the golden state warriors and the sacramento kings um this game is between the ninth and the tenth seed is more important because it is a winner go home situation whichever whatever team loses in this game they will be forced to end their season and they will not move into the playoffs uh, the winner of this team does not get to advance into the playoffs just yet they will have to play the loser of the lakers pelicans game and then whoever wins that matchup will get to play uh, the oklahoma city thunder so that game will take place on Friday between the loser of the Lakers and Pelicans and the winner of the Warriors and Kings. Then on Wednesday, we have our Eastern Conference play-in tournament games. First up, you have the 7-8 and eight matchup between the Miami Heat and the Philadelphia 76ers. This is at 4 p.m. Once again, the winner of this game will advance. They will get to play against the New York Knicks in the playoffs. The loser will have to play in another game. And then you have the 9 and 10 matchup between the Atlanta Hawks and the Chicago Bulls. Whoever wins that game uh, gets to advance to play the loser of the Heat 76ers. And whoever loses in the Hawks Bulls game is eliminated. So these are our four play in tournament games. make a prediction because why not uh, since we're on the trend of predictions and knowing things we'll start with the west you have the lakers playing the pelicans this was the exact game that we just saw to end the season the lakers had to beat the pelicans in the last game uh, in order to avoid dropping in the rankings i think and they were able to do that so just played each other, but in that game, Anthony Davis tweaked his back. He exited the game with something in his back. I don't know what the injury report on it is, um, but LeBron played masterfully. Like I think he had 17 assists. It didn't matter that Davis exited. The Lakers still won handily, but that is something to keep track of so far this season kind of have had the Pelicans number. They won this last game when they were playing in the in-season tournament. The Lakers absolutely whooped the Pelicans, so in both situations where it matters, uh, the Pelicans have suffered a loss. Now, I don't want to say it is a guarantee that the Pelicans lose this game. I think it's very dependent on Anthony Davis's health. If Anthony Davis does not play in this game, I think that the Pelicans will win it. They're playing at home. They're a good team. Uh, they didn't have the best ending to the season, but, you know, whether they have 47, 48, 49 wins, they're a good team. Um, and they did beat the Lakers at some point in the season, so think that it's doable, but if Davis is healthy, just with the buzz around the Lakers and how much the league itself wants the Lakers in the postseason, I do think that they will make it. Um, just in terms of narratives, you know, if you can go into a first round matchup having Pelicans in Denver, it's okay. Uh, I'm sure people will watch it, but I feel like everyone will have Denver easily because they will be thinking with their brain, um, the Pelicans, as nice as they may be, they'll steal maybe one, maybe two games, but I don't think anyone would have them winning that series. The Lakers, though, Lakers fans, basketball fans, LeBron fans, everyone operates with so much delusion when it comes to the Lakers that it would make that series more exciting you would get a rematch of last year's Western Conference Finals, Denver versus LA. Uh, you know, you have the beef with Mike Malone that exists from last season. You have Darvin Ham trying to redeem himself. All these things, all these stories, agendas, they would all get pushed. Um, and obviously, the Lakers have enough star power, they have enough experience that they could actually compete with the Nuggets. So, I'm not saying that the Lakers would win that. I think that the Lakers
Raiders have lost like their last eight games in a row to Denver, but people would give them a chance of more than the Pelicans. So for that reason, I want to say that the Lakers win this game and they advance into the seventh seed and they get to play Denver in the first round. So after that, you have the game between the nine and the ten seed. This is the Warriors and the Kings. This will take place at the Kings Stadium at home. Some information for you guys. The Kings, they finished on a four and six run to end out their season. Four and five. They were losing games. They were losing a lot of games. On top of that, I think that the Warriors do have a little bit of property in the Kings. Kings minds right now. You know, they sent them home last year. It was a game seven. Uh, the Kings were the three seed, the Warriors were the six seed. Obviously, the Kings were having an amazing season. And it came to an end because Curry had a 50 piece in a game seven at the Kings Arena. So, the Kings aren't too hot to end this season. They already lost to this team last year. I think everyone is going to want to watch this game. Uh, and the Warriors, they have been a better team on the road than at home this year. So, that's already working in their favor. And were the hottest team to end this season, like 8-2 was their final record. They got the most wins of any team in their last term, but on top of that, the two games that they lost, one of them was by one point to the Dallas Mavericks, and then the other one was to the Pelicans, and I think that was a three-point game, maybe a five-point game. So the two games that they lost in their final ten, average margin of loss was three points. It's going to be a very competitive game. I do think that the Warriors are going to come out with the victory in this one. They have just gotten the Kings, you know, obviously the Kings weren't like talked about in the past, but with everything between Coach Mike Brown and Steve Kerr being coaches for the Warriors for a while, and now him reviving the Kings, making them so good, uh, and everything last year, this is going to be a great play-in game. I do think that the Warriors will come out on top of once again. Then you've got the Heat and 76ers. This is also going to be a very fun game to watch uh, just because of the Jimmy Butler and Heat, or sorry, not Heat, 76ers rivalry. Uh, Jimmy Butler did used to be on the 76ers, and then they opted to keep Tobias Harris over him, and Jimmy has never let them forget. Uh, he talks about it quite a bit in their matchups, after their matchups, and the Heat usually get the better of the 76ers. Now, the 76ers are on an unbelievable stretch ever since Joel Embiid came back. They haven't really lost, I don't think. They won their last eight in a row, but despite beating like the Thunder and maybe one other good team, the playoff Jimmy is just different. Uh, and I think playoff and play-in are synonymous enough that we're just going to see a crazy performance from Jimmy Butler. Like, he already turns it up in the playoffs as it is, and now he gets to play against the 76ers. I think it's just going to go crazy. Um, so I do have the Miami Heat beating the 76ers in that matchup. Then you have the Atlanta Hawks taking on Chicago Bulls. Um, no offense, this is going to be a boring game. Both these teams finished with the losing record. Or maybe not boring, but I think it's inconsequential. I think whoever wins this game is getting smacked by the loser of the other game. Like, I think that he, he take down the Bulls or the Hawks, and I think that the 76ers take down the Bulls or the Hawks. If either of these two teams somehow creeps into the playoffs, I will be stunned. But that being said, I think that the Bulls will win the Hawks. They are far further from 500. And I don't even know if Drake Young is... No, no, he is back. He spent a lot of time out, but... I think I saw some stats saying that, like, the Hawks this season with DeShante Murray being the only one, they were fine. Uh, with Trey Young being the only one, they were fine. But with both of them being healthy, they were horrible. <laughs> so, yeah, I don't think... I think that duo comes to an end this postseason, and I think the Hawks, they lose. So, after 
that on Friday that gives us a matchup between the Pelicans and the Warriors and a matchup between the Heat and the Bulls. Um, you know, once again, the Pelicans, they are a very good team, but the Warriors have been better on the road this season. Um, and that game, we just saw it happen. It was so close. It really was a nail-biting game. Uh, the Warriors, they kind of let it get away from them in the last couple minutes, and then they crawled right back. It was a last-minute finish, and both teams are going to have that to work off of. But we also got to factor in momentum. The Warriors will be coming off a win against the Kings. They had a great last couple of games. Uh, the Pelicans, on the other hand, they might be a little bit demoralized coming off back-to-back -back losses from the Lakers. And, you know, once again, oh, I totally forgot. No, no, never mind. Uh, nothing. Um, yeah, you, we have to consider what is the NBA going to try and push uh, just in terms of sales. Steph and Curry not in the playoffs. It's brutal. Like, obviously, if it's a Warriors Lakers game, then that star power cancels out. Like, one of them has to exit. We saw that a couple years ago. Uh, it was a very highly watched matchup. It came to the last minute. That was a great game. But between the Pelicans and the Warriors, I think the Warriors have the clear advantage in terms of star power. So, the league is going to want the Warriors in the playoffs if they can get it. And if you can get Shea and the Young Thunder team against the Warriors in the first round, that would be huge. Uh, because the Warriors did kind of, like, take away their last big, big man, you know. They caused the downfall of Kevin Durant. He was their leader. He was their last MVP. Shay, maybe he gets the MVP this season. Maybe he doesn't. I might honestly go to Luka. I don't know. But it would be very cool to see, like, this youngest team ever have to go in the first round against these old dogs, you know, old head warriors who have all this experience and championship caliber roster. Um, I don't want to say championship caliber roster, but like championship winning experience I think would be very entertaining and a lot of the Warriors Thunder games were like this close this year. I think both of, two of them went to overtime. Another one was decided by a point. I think that would be a great matchup. Pelicans Thunder, maybe, maybe it would be cool, but I think OKC and Golden State, just with the histories that they've had, it would be amazing. And that too, you have Shea and Curry, who like, obviously Curry has been the best point guard in the league for a long time, but we're kind of entering in Shea's prime on, I know that Shea just won the all-star starter bid over Curry, and he was fully deserving, he'll probably get all-NBA over Curry as well, but you know, this could be like the Kings last year where the, the Warriors prove maybe it's a, a seven game series that, you know, they're still, they're still in it to win it. And they send these guys packing their bags. Um, and then our last game would be between the 76ers and the Bulls. 76ers going to win that game. Um, again, I have no doubt about it. So, with the 76ers winning that game, we would get a first round matchup between the Boston Celtics and the Philadelphia 76ers. And now, this would be pure entertainment because these guys have matched up so many times in the last few both seasons, and the Celtics have had their number every single time. I don't know if this year would be any different. The Celtics have been on a completely another level from any other team in the East. They're absolutely rolling. Their their roster is amazing. They've been the best team in the league. But the 76ers are very hot. Um, you know, Joel Embiid's still a monster. That series, that series last season, I think it went to like six or seven games as well. So it'll be competitive for sure, and I think it'll bring he'll have a good draw to it. I don't know if the Bulls and the Celtics would necessarily be, I mean, I would still probably watch a game or two, but the 76ers and Celtics, you know, they have so much history, that would be really great. And then, I think 
think that would put the heat with the Knicks, and we just saw that last year, so that would also be pretty cool. Um, Bibbs, you know, you have Tom Thibodeau against his old player, Jimmy Butler. That would be a pretty cool storyline as well. So the other playoff teams that are competing, uh, just so you have an idea, in the West, you'll have the Timberwolves facing off against the Suns, which could be a pretty cool matchup, and then the Clippers playing against the Mavericks, and then in the East, you have the Bucks playing against the Pacers. That will be entertaining, um, just because the Bucks had such difficulty against the Pacers this season, and yeah, they're that was one team that Giannis was saying crazy things. I think he had this one quote where he was like, uh, we lost so many times to the Pacers. You know, you think about when you're sleeping, you think about it when you're eating, you think about it while you're warming up, even while you're doing the freaky, you're thinking about it. And it was just like, Giannis, what are you saying? <laughs> but um, that should be a lot of fun. And then you have the Cavs and the Magic. I won't lie, I'm not watching that one at all. I don't think I'm going to watch a single game of the Cavs Magic, uh, just because I do not care. I think that the Cavs would win that, but honestly, it doesn't matter. I don't think that either of those teams is going very far. Maybe they'd have like a Cinderella story type of thing, but it's like, I don't know. But yeah, that concludes all of my thoughts on the play-in tournament recap of the NBA standings from this season and my predictions. Uh, everything, we're all done. Thank you for watching uh, this video. If you like content like this, feel free to like, comment, or subscribe. I'll be putting out another video um, later this week, I think. Uh, definitely after the play-in games have settled, I'll put out my full tournament, like full playoff prediction bracket. Um, at some point, and yeah, that's what I've got coming up, so thanks for watching, and I will see you next time. Oh, also, uh, uh, I did forget the most recent video that I did. It's a conventional ASMR type video. I honestly considered not posting it just because I was so hesitant. I'm not very good at conventional ASMR, I don't think. Uh, most of my content is just like whisper ramble, you could say, where I talk about sports primarily. And so, putting myself in front of a microphone and cosplaying as like an actual ASMR disc where I'm trying to make sounds and things going like this, uh, it is a bit more uncomfortable. I'm not quite as good at it, but that video saw a bunch of views um, rapidly compared to the other couple videos that I've done recently. So for those of you that managed to make it to the end of this video, just let me know what you think of that. I'm assuming if you watch this entire thing, you're more on this channel for the sports related content. Um, so what is your take on that kind of video? Because it's not exactly what I made this channel for, but I'm open to trying more of it. And uh, yeah, just let me know what your feedback is because so far, there's only one comment on it that talks about making the video less bright, and that is on me. Sometimes I color correct the videos. Most of the times I don't. Um, my setup in Denver, I feel like it's less bright, but the one here is obviously very in your face, and I can imagine putting it on your phone kind of illuminates the entire room, so I will start doing a better job of color correction on my videos, kind of make it 